1 Samuel chapter 30. I've preached this sermon before. I've probably preached this sermon here before, but uh, I think it'll be a blessing to you. It's been a blessing to me, the, the subject. It revolves around the life of David, but more, more than just the person is the lesson that he had learned from God in knowing how to encourage himself in the Lord. Uh, I think this is a really important passage and a really important uh, understanding for us tonight. Let me read 1 Samuel starting in uh, chapter 30 and verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. I want you to stop reading there. We'll, we'll look at a few more verses in a moment. But I want you to notice, first of all, David and his men, they all suffer the same thing, but they have a different reaction. Um, you know, sometimes in life we think that what's happened to us has never happened to anybody else before. Well, the Bible contradicts that. It says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. What that means is that you're not the first person that this has happened to, and you're not the only person that it'll happen to. There's no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above the year able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, that's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. I say this a lot, but that's one of those verses, if you don't know it, you need to at least know where it is. <laughs> uh, that's a, that's a, a part of our first aid kit as Christians. First, let me point out the men's response. Now, Ziklag was their, basically their hometown that they'd set up. And while they were gone out to battle and so on, uh, Roving bands of soldiers had come through and taken all their families captive, burned their city and, and left. Well, of course, when they got back and saw that, they, man, they were upset. They wept. David wept, too. And uh, the Bible says in, uh, in verse 6, David was greatly distressed. Well, he wasn't the only one. They were all distressed. And here's why. For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Now, that, that word grieved, it's interesting. I, I talked this morning some about Ruth and Naomi. Remember when Naomi came back to Israel? She said, don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara. That's, a, that's that word grieved. It means bitter. Um, they were bitter. Their response. They weren't just distressed. You know, we're, we're all going to have emotional experiences in life. We're, gonna, we're all going to have things where something happens. We think, oh, man, how could this happen? Uh, we're going to be distressed. Uh, the word distressed means bound or made narrow. In modern language, we'd say we're, they're in a tight spot. Things have gotten tough. But his men's response was they got bitter, and then they began to blame and threaten. Let me tell you, that's the natural reaction. A and as Christians, we know that natural is not the best. <laughs> Uh, you know, the world tries to say, oh, you need everything natural. No, God says the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. We want the spiritual reaction. Now, quite often we'll have a natural reaction, but we've got to get over it and, and let the Lord uh, work. His, his men had a natural reaction. They got bitter. They began to blame and to threaten. You know, they were threatening to stone David. And in your situations... Uh, the, the natural tendency is to who is to blame and how can I get even with them? And if, if that's your response, it needs to change. I just can't put it any more clearly than that. If your response to trouble is to get bitter and to blame and, and to threaten, it needs to change. 
it, it doesn't make it any better. I mean, yes, it's a natural reaction. You know, when someone lashes out at you, the natural reaction is to lash back. Does that make it any better? Does it make it right? <laughs> Isn't it odd how when somebody does something to us, we know how wrong it is, and yet our natural reaction is to do the same back to them and be just like them? Uh, it, it doesn't make sense spiritually, and it doesn't help. Now, David's response was a little different. David wept. There's nothing wrong with emotions. In fact, wouldn't life be terrible without emotions? I mean, there's some, there's some pretty nice emotions. There's some bad ones as well. I mean, there's some that are hard to deal with, but uh, David wept, and David was distressed. He knew this was a hard spot. Things were, were closing in. I mean, it, it was, he needed some answers. But the Bible tells us, instead of being grieved, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. This is one of those truths that if you don't understand it, you need to work at it until you do. You need to understand what it means to encourage yourself in the Lord. He didn't get bitter. He didn't blame and threaten. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, the point I want you to see is this. When we're confronted with the issues of life, we have a choice. You are not a slave to your emotions. The, the world tries to present it like that. Oh, I had to do that. No, you didn't. Now, you may have a natural feeling, but if you have Christ in your heart, you have a choice. And we can be like David or we can be like those men. There's, there's a verse. This is another one of those verses you need to know. It's Ephesians 4, verses 31 and 32. The New Testament side of it. Ephesians 4, 31. Uh, this verse, it's like God just pulled every word he, that there is about anger and put it in one verse. <laughs> he says in Ephesians 4, 31, Let all bitterness, there's that word, and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. God says when... When you're wanting to do those kinds of things, he says, put it away. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Aren't you glad that God has forgiven you? He says, that's how we need to approach others. We're going to be wronged, but we need to be like Jesus. Put it away. Be different than the godless is the point. Be different than the godless. Uh, we are not slaves to our emotions. Now, why was David able to do this? David was able to do this because he'd made a habit of doing this. This wasn't the first time he'd had trouble. <laughs> you know, he, he was, a, even as a young man, herding the sheep, a, a lion would come. Well, he could have been, you know, just run away or whatever. But he, he handled it. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He trusted the Lord. A bear came. He, he, he was confronted by Goliath. You know, and, and his response was, you know, you might be big, but my God's bigger. He, he had made a habit of trusting the Lord. And I, I want to encourage you tonight to start that habit. <laughs> I want you to see that it's possible to trust the Lord when you're confronted by very difficult situations. I mean, I can't imagine a much more difficult situation than this. Man, you get, you get home and your home's gone and, and uh, they've left a note. We have your wife and kids and we're taking them to Timbuktu, you know. Uh, that would be a, t a tough situation to face. But number one, we need to see that we can trust the Lord. We don't just have to give in to our emotions. Well, the second thing I want you to see is what to do. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, I need to encourage myself in the Lord. It, you know, it's not taking a pep pill or something. Uh, what did he do? Look at verses 7 through 9. There's three very simple things that he did straight away. David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abi Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. Now, that has to do with prayer. It's part of the high priest's um, uniform. <laughs> You know, what, what he wore. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went. 
Now, now there's three really basic, simple things right there. The first thing David did was he prayed. That should be our first response, not our last. <laughs> he prayed. Secondly, he listened to what God said. And thirdly, he did what God said. You say, Pastor, that's too simple. No, that's it, the beginning of encouraging yourself in the Lord. The first thing he did was, was he prayed. And then he listened to God's word. Listen, if we're saved, we believe that this is God's word, that it's powerful, uh, that, that it's uh, sufficient, uh, that it's complete. Yeah, th this book answers the questions that we have. And then thirdly, he did what God said. Uh, we need to learn what it means to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Uh, there's a lot, lot more to it than that. Uh, we need to remember how we've been blessed in the past. Listen, God's blessed you. I don't care who you are. God has blessed you. <laughs> and uh, we need to remember those things. We can focus on all the bad things, but we don't have to. Remember his character. Remember who he is. Wednesday nights, we've been talking about things like, uh, you know, how they ask the question, is anything too hard for God? Well, the answer is no. Will not the God of, will not God do right? And the answer is yes. <laughs> Sometimes you hear that little simple child's prayer where they say, God is good, God is great, thank you for the food we ate. Well, those two basic things about God are, are a pretty good start to his character. God is good, God is great. <laughs> and we need to believe that. We need to learn what it means to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Don't let distress, that tight spot, turn to grief and bitterness and lead then to blame and threatening. That, that's a common problem. It, it, it comes up in neighborhoods, it comes up in families, it comes up between countries, it can happen in churches, uh, but that's not the response that God wants us to have. Look with me, if you will, in, in Psalm 84, Psalm 84, verse 5. This is a really precious passage, I think. Psalm 84, verse 5. You know, the Bible and, and in life, we often talk about a valley, you know, as we use that talking about a, a difficult time, going through a valley, you know. Well, here he uses that same, even as a name for it. Psalm 84, verse 5 says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. Now that, that name, the valley of Baca, means the valley of, we of weeping. The valley of weeping. It's a hard time. He says, the rain also filleth the pools. So what you're seeing here is as you're going through the valley, you're going through a, a, a difficult time, you dig a well. And when the rains come, you got water. You know, rain can, can do lots of things. Uh, it, can, it can tear things up, but we've, we can't live without it. And when you make a well, that's for drinking. That's for helping others. He says in verse 7, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. In case you wondered, we were singing about Zion tonight. It's usually talking about heaven. Uh, o Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Uh, and the, the picture here, this is a word picture. He's saying when you're going through your hard time, go to God for refreshment. Dig a well in the valley. And then when somebody else comes along, you'll have some refreshment for them too. The New Testament uh, corresponding passage uh, is in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We, we went through 2 Corinthians not that long ago. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 talks about our God of hope. Uh, verse 3 and then verse 4, the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort with we ourselves are comforted of God. See, what he's saying is when, when you go through trouble... Go to the Lord. Run to the Lord. Don't run away from Him. Get that comfort. And then when somebody else goes through it, you can assure them that there's help from the Lord. Dig a well in the valley. Leave a place of refreshment uh, for yourself and, and for others. You're going to decide what memory your, pro your problem will trigger. You're going to decide what memory that problem will trigger. You'll either remember the problem or you'll remember the solution. 
And it'll come up, you know. If you've been through something, it'll come up. And you need to remember that in that problem, God helped you through. You need to just go past the problem uh, to the solution and God's help. When you respond like David did, it becomes a source of blessing. I know people whose ministry is based on a problem they had at one point in their life. God taught them a lesson, and they're then able to, to teach it to others. You know, we need to start the habit of encouraging ourselves in the Lord. It starts with those first three things, praying, reading God's Word, doing what God says. And then, like we read in Ephesians, you know, putting away bitterness, consciously setting it aside. That's the natural reaction, getting bitter against God, getting bitter against the ones who've wronged us. But we can choose to be different. Be kind one to another, tenderhearted. You know, it's a real problem being hard-hearted. <laughs> it's kind of easier to live because you won't get so, you know, you won't get so hurt if you're hard-hearted. But you'll miss out on all the, all the joy and all the blessing. Aren't you glad God wasn't hard-hearted towards you? We need to put away the bitterness. Choose uh, to be what God wants us to be. You know, a lot of things in life you don't get to choose. If I'd have got to choose, I'd have been a lot taller and been a lot better basketball player. You know, I didn't get to choose. I certainly wouldn't have chose this nose. <laughs> uh, you know, there's lots of things you don't get to choose. But here's something you get to choose. How you're going to respond when trouble comes. Don't throw it away. Don't, don't think, oh, my, my emotions are in control. Let God be in control. Get past those emotions and see what the Lord would do. In general, we're just saying, enjoy the Lord. You ever seen a little kid when they get hurt? Yeah, I mean really little. Man, they're looking for mom, aren't they? Sometimes they wait to cry until they see mom. You know? uh, that's what we're talking about. Run to the Lord. Don't run away from him. Do what he says. Remember how great he is. Now, he can help. He will help. He has helped. And others are going to come that same way too. Others are going to go through that problem that, that you go through and are going to need, need your help. David put away bitterness and encouraged himself in the Lord. I can almost guarantee you one thing that David did as well. Now, you may not like this, but I, I'd really recommend it. I think David sang. David was always singing, wasn't he? You know, sad songs, happy songs, angry songs, fighting songs. He had a song for everything. Uh, don't go to the world's songs. They, they won't help you. When the Bible talks about our songs as Christians, it mainly uses the characteristic, we have a new song. We have a new song as Christians. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. It's Psalm 96. Sing unto the Lord all, all the earth. And later he says, for the Lord is great and greatly to be, to be praised. We have something to sing about. And you know, as a as a Christian, you may not be a very good singer, so you may not want to sing where too many people hear you, but, uh, you know, whatever. Who cares? Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. You know, just, just singing a, a song of hope will, will help you. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Somebody was saying they really enjoyed it. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That'd be pretty hard to be down in the dump singing that, wouldn't it? Get in front of the mirror and sing it. You enjoy it even more. Oh, my God is so great. You know, uh, who knows what kind of songs you know? I was thinking about the song, Rock of Eight, uh, The Solid Rock. Uh, what, uh, let's see, page 477. Let me just uh, find that verse. There's, there's some songs that just really have encouragement for you. And you need to, uh, to have some in your heart. But, man, you can get out a songbook and, and sing as well. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Man, I, I dare you to just really belt out the solid rock and, and be feeling too bad for, for too long. Uh, sing. We need a new song. And when emotions come that are hurting us, uh, take action. Now, I've shared this with you before. The, the letter is A-C-T-I-O-N. Number one, admit you have the emotion. Don't say, I'm not sad. I'm not, you know, have you ever heard somebody say, I'm not angry? <laughs> Consider the source. Now, you, you may not be able to work that out, but uh, 
Uh, just consider why, what's going on. T is thank God that he will help. We have hope in, in the Lord. Thank God that he'll help. And then I think one of the most important is I. Identify the proper biblical response. I mean, you're going through this thing. Admit it. Consider it. Thank God he'll help. Identify the proper biblical response. I've got that written out if, if you want those for later. You might need help at that point. You might need someone to, to help you search the scriptures and see, well, what is the, the proper biblical response? And then, oh, oh, here's a hard one. Obey. <laughs> Obey the, what the Lord says. And N is nurture the fruit of the Spirit. You know, our life before God is like a, a tender little plant, and we need to nurture the right things and the growth uh, that God wants in, in our life. Uh, you know, one of the questions that, that you need to answer is, do you know the Lord so that you can turn to Him? When these tough times come, do you know Him? Do you know Him? Uh, did you ever stop and think that Jesus went through great trouble in order to provide salvation to you? In Hebrews chapter 12, it talks about looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the, the throne of God. You know, God. God went through great difficulties for, for your salvation. Do you know him? In John 1.12, he says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. When you know the Lord, he's your heavenly father. He even uses the, the enduring term, Abba, your Papa, Daddy. Uh, he's our heavenly father, and we can turn to him if he is our father. Will you turn to him and trust him with the moments of your life? If you're saved, will you do that? It's a choice. Are you going to be like David, or are you going to be like his men? Are you going to turn to bitterness, or are you going to turn to Jesus? The choice is up to you. I want to encourage you. Uh, spend some time thinking about this. Uh, I'm going to give you an assignment tonight. Uh, I've, got, uh, I've got sheets, and uh, I'm going to send them home with you. I hope that you'll do it. It's an example of encouraging yourself in the Lord from 2 Samuel 22. It's actually a psalm that David wrote. Uh, David had a lot of experience in this. I encourage you to do that. And I've got those, those notes about action, uh, how to master your, your emotions. You know, we, uh, we can blame a lot of things and a lot of people, but we're a lot better off if we just go to the Lord and, and let him uh, heal us and help us. Uh, David's men, they were grieved. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He didn't go the natural way. He went God's way. And I, I want to encourage you. Uh, listen, if you haven't had a cataclysmic event in your life yet, you will. Uh, it, just, it just happens. And uh, we need the Lord's strength. Uh, man, it's, uh, it's amazing to think what, what life offers. Uh, but compared to eternity, it's just, it's just a vapor. We're going to take a, a, a moment and sing for, in our hymnal the song number 156, Is Your All on the Altar? Page 156 is, is the number. And, uh, you know, as we, as we think about this, this thought tonight, encouraging ourselves in the Lord, um, is you're all on the altar. Are you, are you willing to let the Lord work in your heart and life through the situations that, that happen? Uh, Ezra, why don't you just come and lead us in, in a few verses of that? Maybe you need to be praying as we sing. Uh, I, I don't know how this, this message might affect you tonight. I hope that it will encourage you and that you'll uh, have learned something that will help you.